Hey, good morning, everybody. Tom, we've got it made again today. Huh? You know, Jim, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a sense of deja vu. <laughs> well, this morning we have Allie Brugman with us again from the North River Prevention Partners, and this is going to be huge. Yes, yes. Allie, good morning. Nice to see good you morning. back again. Thank you for inviting me back. We had uh, we spoke uh, some time ago when we were talking about the Michael Steele Foundation, yes. and, and uh, so we appreciate you being here. Thank you. And you introduced us to the North River Prevention Partners, yes. and uh, this is all new to me. I didn't know at the time, but since then I found out that you're huge. You're everywhere up here, so thanks for your work. Your group is small, but it's mighty. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a lot to it. And so you've done a lot in a short amount of time. Give us the highlights on that. Tell us what you do. Okay, sure. So North River Prevention Partners is a substance abuse prevention coalition, which means that we work with anyone and everyone who is interested in helping us to empower our youth, to make our families safer, and to make our community healthier and increase the well-being here. That might mean uh, talking about drugs and alcohol. It might mean talking about mental health. It might mean giving tips to parents on how to have those hard conversations about your expectations, your values, and belief systems that you want your children to follow. Mm -hmm. So we do all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you, you're plugged in with, with the high schools here, Palmetto High. And, yes. And, uh, yes. And also the uh, parish community yes. high school. So do you go on site with them? Um, we do. And uh, usually that's uh, on request. But we have a couple of things that, we're, that we've been doing. We've been working a lot with healthy teens and telement therapy. We've uh, started a uh, program called RENEW. It stands for Reducing Negativity, Elevating Wellness. And it's a multi-tiered prevention program aimed at keeping Manatee County teens from experiencing a mental health crisis. This is so exciting because nobody's doing this. And we've been able to work with the administration at Palmetto High School to be able to pilot this program. We received funding from the Bishop Parker Foundation. And the way the program works is that students are referred either by themselves, their parents, coaches, counselors, teachers. And they attend four uh, weekly uh, classes with healthy teens. If you're not familiar with healthy teens, they have an amazing group of young people called teen health educators that specialize in peer education around all sorts of things, around mental health, trauma, uh, substance abuse, um, healthy relationships, and things like that. Healthy teens are rigorously trained in these things to be able to reach their peers and to um, help empower themselves and their peers. So participants in Renew meet with healthy teens four times, once a week for a month, talk about a whole bunch of different topics. They do goal setting and they talk about trauma-informed uh, care, things like that. During the four month period, the same participants will uh, meet with a licensed mental health uh, therapist from Telement Therapy. Via video conferencing, they have a 90 minute wellness check-in. This is something that, it's not a therapy session per se, what it is is a chance for the young person to meet with a licensed professional, talk about whatever is on their minds. The licensed professional can then um, do what they do as far as giving the, the uh, teens guidance, some students may be recommended for further therapeutic support, but there's, after that, there will be a 30-minute follow-up with that same therapist. So this had two hours in face-to-face -face with, well, face-to-screen sure. with a licensed therapist for these kids. Um, the whole point is to keep them from experiencing a mental health crisis. We know that our kids are in need of mental health care. We know that when they uh, feel heard and cared for and empowered, they do better in school, they do better in life. And this is at all at no cost to the students. So who, how, where do you get your funding? Where does this come from? This particular funding for this program came from the Bishop Parker Foundation. Right. So, so you have multiple sources. In other words, other... Absolutely. Our, um, our coalition itself, for the most part, we are funded with federal grants. We have the Drug Free Communities Grant from the CDC. And we also have the Stop Act Grant from SAMHSA. SAMHSA stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Both are federal... Uh, the CDC, you might remember from COVID, the CDC, oh, wow. um, but both are, are federal agencies and both of those grants are meant to help coalitions like us establish um, prevention strategies in our communities. The STOP Act grant in particular um, <clears throat> funds underage drinking prevention strategies. So I haven't been to a high school in a few years, maybe. Do the schools push this? I mean, I, it's almost, I would think it's almost so, mandatory. No, not necessarily. Um, you might. You, you might know that 
in any school, there's a lot of, particularly in public schools, there's a lot of competition for those instructional minutes. There's a lot of competition for the different so enrichments. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. only so much time in a day. We have standards that the kids have to meet. And it, it can be frustrating for everyone, teachers and admin included. Um, so North River Prevention Partners and our partners, um, Healthy Teens, Drug Free Manatee, Hanley Foundation, we work with the Department of Health and their SWAT teams. Um, we all kind of try to to help one another get in our, these enrichment programs, this information on um, these presentations into schools. And we do that by building individual uh, relationships with administrators and with teachers because they out, do have an awful lot of autonomy when it comes to choosing what outside groups are going to come in to offer services. Listen, you know more than I do about it, but it seems to me, Tom, that sometimes the parents are the last to know there's, a, there's an issue. Yes. Yes, that's, that's often the case. And so part of what we do is try to help uh, parents understand what the risks are to their kids, um, that even good kids can make a bad decision once in a while. It's really important for parents to not only talk about drugs and alcohol, because this isn't a just say no generation. That didn't work. It's It doesn't work. It what doesn't does work. work no, we've been there. Right. right yeah. Absolutely. What does work or ta is talking with your kid as honestly and openly as you can about these issues. Uh, letting your child understand what your family's values are. If you do not expect them to have a drink of alcohol when they're out of the party, you let them know. We do not expect you to be having alcohol. Kids are much more likely to live up to their parents' expectations when those expectations are clear cut. When they, the consequences are also like, hey, you know what? If I have a drink, my mom's going to take my car keys away and they're going to drive again this year. So whatever that looks like for your family as a parent, really, really important to sit down and have those conversations. And as a parent of a teen, I can tell you that's a hard conversation to have. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. really hard, but it's worthwhile, mm -hmm. and it's your best chance at making sure your child is up healthy, happy, and empowered. Interesting. It's a new day, Tom. Yeah. So as, as a parent, <clears throat> and I have suspicion that there's an issue, what can I do? I mean, do there are a myriad of things to do. First, you can ask your kid. What's going on? Yeah, uh, come here. That doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it does. You might yeah. be surprised. You could also reach out to an organization like North River Prevention Partners. Drug Free Me and a T also has amazing um, resources. Uh, Centerstone, great resources at Centerstone. We I, we often um, overlook what's right in front of our face. Centerstone is an amazing community partner, and they Absolutely. do amazing work. Mm -hmm. So there are all sorts of uh, of resources because it depends what your what your suspicion is, what the reality is, and where you go from there. So mm -hmm. do you think that your kid might have tried something at a party? Okay. Or do you think that your kid is maybe using more regularly, you found vape pens, or um, your kid has flat out said, this is what I'm so, doing. So it's not just that, though, but you all, you all take care of the, the mental health issues, yes, too. So yes. So it's kind of like two different things, It's maybe. It is very, yes. Tip, yeah. Two different things, but they are so closely tied that um, our work is often interwoven with okay. one of the other. So we know that if we can improve a child's mental health, we will reduce the likelihood that that child's going to use drugs or alcohol. Mm -hmm. Charlie, let me ask you this. Do you do, uh, do you work with other communities or organizations? Do you do uh, uh, events or can you come out and talk to a group? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, we don't do a whole lot of that because... A lot of people don't know that we exist. There's there's not a, a whole lot of uh, advertisement out there. But yeah, um, we're happy to come out and talk to parents. We're happy to come out and talk to uh, group. I've done church groups. I've done parent right. groups. We've done been in classrooms. We've done community. We were out uh, all summer long doing teen mental health first aid for the Boys and Girls Club. So it's um, it's something absolutely that somebody could get in touch with us and I would be able to Taylor, whatever. They, okay. they we'll be sure to and have contact information on yes. the screen that you can all you can contact Allie. And so your, organi your organization, see how I say that? Your yes. organization is the 5013C, 501C3. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so it's not necessarily just a GoFundMe deal. Not this at is, all. This is for real. This is for real. Uh, tax deductible. Um, your uh, Whatever donations we get, we call them discretionary dollars because they pay for things that federal money does not. Exactly. So, for instance, for someone who might not know, a federal uh, a federal grant doesn't pay for food for teenagers. You can't have a meeting with teenagers without food. Makes no sense. <laughs> no. So, but it also doesn't pay for stuff like T-shirts. And so, my my board always laughs at me because I'm like, okay, we've got to increase our 
our funds for, for snacks and t-shirts because mm -hmm. our federal funds don't pay for those. Actually, that's something to do with that. Mm -hmm. So what excites you most? What's coming up now? <laughs> So uh, we are just opening up our recruitment for our North River Youth Coalition this year. Our Youth Coalition is comprised mostly of, of kids from MSA, Palmetto High School, and Parish Community High School. In fact, we just awarded, uh, we, I was here last uh, in the spring, we talked about the Michael Steele Memorial right. Scholarship. Exactly. We awarded two uh, high school graduating seniors $1,000 a piece, uh, Toby Cassidy from Parish Community High School, and uh, Sydney Balthazar from MSA both earned a scholarship from North River Youth Coalition for their years of service. That's incredible. Nice. Thank so, you. Uh, nice. Well, it's our way of thanking these kids because it's really one of the things that we know, um, and any teacher will tell you this, anyone who works with kids will tell you that it's important to empower teenagers. It's important to, to um, give them opportunities to use their voice, to become civically engaged to find out that the adults in the community really, really value youth. And youth, uh, the Youth Coalition really does that. We offer community service hours. We offer, in fact, this year we'll be requiring um, our Youth Coalition to attend two Palmetto City Commission meetings and two school board meetings so that they're more civically engaged. They understand what that public comment means at the beginning and in the middle of every one of those uh, meetings. We all know that as adults, it's fun to talk about national politics, but the politics that really affect your day-to-day -day life happen right in your right own here. hometown. Mm -hmm. So it's our goal to help these kids understand how that, that system works and how they can become involved in it. Because even if you're 16 and you can't vote, you sure as heck can get up and have a two-minute comment about whatever is going on in your city and how that affects you and your peers. So we encourage our kids to do that. Um, we offer uh, the, those all important community service hours for the bright future scholarship right. that the kids need to have. And this is something that a lot of parents don't understand and maybe a lot of teenagers don't understand. If you've got a university bound student and they've got to have those community service hours for that Florida bright future scholarship, that's great. You can get those in a lot of different places. You can get those from the key club at school sure. or all sorts of stuff. What a lot of people don't understand is how valuable community based community service hours are to universities and colleges. They want well-rounded kids. They want kids who are active on school campus, but they also want kids who are active in their community. And we certainly offer that to our kids. The other thing that we, that we do is we celebrate the kids who are making the right decisions. They're not using drugs. They're not using alcohol. They're not vaping. They're uh, trying to do their very, very best in school. Maybe they're not superstar athletes. Maybe they're not superstar uh, scholars. But if they give two years of service minimum to the North River Youth Coalition. We can guarantee them some type of Michael Steele Memorial Scholarship at the end. Um, so if you've got a ninth grader coming up, give us a call, visit our website, sign your kid up for the North River Youth Coalition. If uh, you've got a 10th grader, 11th and 12th, we will accept a senior who wants to serve, but those seniors would not be eligible for the scholarship. Of course. We're excited about this, actually, and I can tell you that here at Leslie Wells Realty, we're behind this. We support you guys 100%. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. your work. Tom, this is our future. North River Prevention yes. Partners is our future here in North Absolutely. River. And if I can, could, you, could I ask you to hit the like button down there and please share this with all your friends because this is a, a tremendous program that not a whole lot of people know about right now, and, and it could benefit a lot more people if, if more people knew about it. Yeah, I'm excited about it already. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing, and we appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.